talking about the international marketing channels, and then at the end of the see some time is left to work, to work on the, present, the final presentation and ask questions about that. So just to review the last class, some students were on their military service. We talked about the digital marketing. We finished by talking about uh, different types like uh, online distributors like Amazon and eBay or G Market. Uh, we talked about the advantage of using that because of the uh, cost was relatively low, three dollars for every twenty dollar wallet, and they deal with the payment and other problems with customers. And the main advantage is the customers trust them. Rather than buying directly from your website, they trust the online distributor that they can get returns, that they don't get any fraud on their credit card. Okay? And they have a large customer base, a lot of customers who already use that. Uh, so we also talked about the affiliate marketing. Some people like the affiliate marketing, which is paying some person to promote your product on the blog or YouTube. Okay. Uh, so the class seems to like affiliate marketing, social media, and online distributors as the best strategy for a small company for their online marketing. So we then started to talk about the uh, channel of distribution, which is getting the product from the producer to the customer. We mentioned that every country has a different system. Uh, for example, the US and Japan has a very different system. Okay. We talked about the Japanese system a little bit with a high density of middle men and uh, those kinds of things. Hard to open a new store in Japan. Difficult to break into. So we finished uh, talking uh, here about the patterns of the retail. So we continue from here. So the seller should control two sets of channels one in their own country and one in the foreign country. We can have an agent. In the middleman, we can have an agent middleman or a merchant middleman. So an agent is uh, somebody who is representing you. So you make a contract with them and they represent you. Okay? So I could hire an agent. I want to sell some goods in Spain. I hire an agent in Spain. They're working for me. The goods still belong to me. And they're helping me to distribute the goods. But a merchant, merchant means buying and selling. So the merchant buys the goods from me. So I sell them my goods. Okay? So for example, I want to sell something in Spain. Instead of hiring the agent, I just sell it to somebody. And I'm finished. I don't control anymore. Okay? So the merchant takes the title to the goods and buy and sell on their own account. They are more interested in profit and they have low brand loyalty. Advantages are less credit risk and less stress. So the, we have these two things which play off, limited control versus minimal financial and management commitment. So a problem with the merchant middleman is that they can get our product and they don't have just our product. They buy a lot of other products. Okay? So maybe they decide not to advertise our product or our product isn't selling very well. Okay? Then they decide your product is not selling well, I'm going to finish. I'm not buying your product and selling it anymore in this country. Okay? But the agent is not going to have that problem. Even though your good is, is not selling well, the agent is working for you. Okay? So the agent is going to continue to try to sell the product and try hard. Do the advertising and try hard. So with the agent we, can, we have control. Okay? But the merchant middleman no control. But with the agent, we have more financial and management commitment. It means we have to help them with the advertising. We have to pay them the salary and worry about, is, are the goods selling well or not? But with the merchant, we don't have any financial commitment. Once we sell the goods, they're gone. 
So there are two main choices companies have about distributing their product. So here is a graph which shows all of the different routes. So we start off with the domestic producer and we finish with the foreign consumer. So we could go directly domestic producer to foreign consumer. How could that happen? We just deliver directly. We could we have our own website, okay? And somebody orders something from us on our website from Finland and we post it to Finland. Okay? So we send directly to the consumer. It doesn't happen that often. Okay? Otherwise, we can use these ways. Simplest way for the company we're going to talk about in a minute is use the expert management company. Okay? The expert management company then looks after all the things. We can have exporter, importer. So we sell to somebody in our country and they export. Okay? We sell to the importer in another country. This is the more traditional way to sell to the trading companies. Then we can hire the foreign agent or sell to the merchant wholesaler. Or we can go, they go on to sell to the foreign retailer. And then the retailer can sell to the consumer, usually. So we have a lot of different ways we can distribute our product here. All of these different middlemen that we we can sell to the, it could go all of these ways. We could sell to a wholesaler in our country. They could sell to the exporter. The exporter could sell to the importer. The importer could sell to the merchants. The merchant could sell to the foreign retailer and to the consumer. We could go all of those ways, or we could go directly. So we have to decide on which route do we want to go for selling our product. Okay? So you also in your project will have to decide what way do you want to use. Figure out what way do you want to use for selling your product to the foreign consumer. So different types of middlemen. We have global retailers. So we start here. We're the producer. Okay? And then we sell directly to the foreign retailer here. Okay? Uh, so we sell to Walmart. And then Walmart sells to everybody. Okay? That's a pretty simple, easy for our company. Okay? Can you think of other big global retailers apart from Walmart? What global or foreign retailers do you have in Korea? Do you have Walmart in Korea? No? E Marts, are they global? I mean, not Korean companies, other companies, which is not Korean. Costco. Costco, right? So you could sell to Costco, sells all over the world. Who else? Tesco, do you know Tesco? Tesco, the British chain. Carrefour, do you have Carrefour here? They have in China. French one, right? You know Carrefour, okay? Uh, big uh, IKEA, for example. We have some nice furniture, and we sold it to IKEA. Could be sold all over the world, right? So we can sell it in that kind of way. We can use the export management company. So what does an export management company do? They do all the kind of things we're learning in this course. So they're going to help us to make the marketing plan. They research the farm markets. They find the best way of distributing. They go to the trade shop. They handle the shipping and customs, insurance and banking. They do the advertising. They make the finance. They speak the foreign language. And they advise on overseas packing and laws. So these are the kind of things you're doing. Researching the foreign markets, finding the best method of distribution, giving advice about advertising and packing and laws, right? Maybe they don't do adapting the product, but related to the research, the company could decide to adapt the product. So really that's a least work way. We just give to the export management company and let them do all of those things for us. So trading companies, trading companies, exporting and importing companies. Used to be a lot of trading companies a hundred years ago. 
Uh, the biggest uh, trading company was the British India Corporation. At one stage they had their own army of hundreds of thousands of people a couple of hundred years ago. And they actually fought a war. The company, trading company actually fought a war against the Indian government and won. Okay. But these days, trading companies not as big as they used to be in the past. Uh, we have complementary marketers like Gillette. Uh, we have uh, export agents, export associations. Uh, export associations is uh, all the companies who are exporting get together and make their own association so they can share the knowledge. Okay? About, let's say, all of you guys have your own company and you're all exporting to China. So you had some experience in China, so you're going to help them. Okay? Maybe you have some network or some contact or some advice about the distribution. And then you went to Spain, so you can help them about Spain. And we have government middlemen. Uh, we can't think, we have to think about government as well as an important person we can sell to. For example, the Netherlands government has 10,000 different suppliers. So you are producing boots, you're selling boots, you want to sell boots to the Netherlands army, the army in the Netherlands. It's a big contract, okay? So governments also uh, spend a lot of things. So just uh, complementary marketers means that uh, we help each other. Do you understand piggybacking? Piggyback? Do you like piggybacks? Do you like getting a piggyback? Huh? Honest, do you like getting piggybacks? What is a piggyback? When you get on someone's back and they take it over. Maybe on your military uh, service on, yeah, on Wednesday, did you do piggybacking? Lift somebody on your back and run? <laughs> huh? No. No? Uh, so it means that Gillette, for example, is a global company and they have a distribution system in many countries. Okay? So they made an agreement with Duracell. Do you know Duracell? Duracell sells batteries, similar to razors, similar kind of distribution and shops. So Gillette allowed Duracell to use the same distribution system as they had. So Gillette already set up the distribution system, for example, in Africa or South America. Okay, with their distributors and shops and agreements. And they helped Duracell to make the same agreements with the same shops and the same distribution. So it was advantage for Duracell. They got their distribution done quickly and easily. And also advantage for Gillette. They got paid some money by Duracell to help them. Complimentary is helping. So that's another way we can do that. So. When we're selecting who, what middleman should we use, we have to think about these things. We need to identify the specific target markets. Who are we selling to specifically? It's going to, if we are just selling to, let's say, some very niche product, just to some very special market, maybe we can just do online sales directly to the customer. Okay? So we have to think about who is our target. Uh, we have to specify the marketing goals. How much market share do we want? How much profit margin do we want? What about our financial and personal commitment? We, want, we don't want to have much commitment. We just want to produce our goods and forget about it. Then we just sell immediately to the uh, exporters. How much control do we want? Okay. Do we care about how good our advertising is in the other country? Right? Do we care whether, even though our product is not selling well, it continues to be sold in the other product or just give up? Maybe we don't mind. Maybe our company says, look, if we sell the product in Spain, good. If not, doesn't matter. Right? I'll just sell it to somebody else and let them <coughs> try to sell it. If they can sell it, good, I get profit. If not, I don't get much loss anyway. Okay? I don't have much commitment to Spain. Or do I have a lot of commitment to Spain, a long-term commitment? I'm planning to go there and build out in Europe. Then in that case, I'm going to 
hire an agent rather than uh, import them. Okay? So we have to think about those things. We also think about the six C's of the middleman. The cost of the middleman, how much do I need to pay the agent, how much commission do I need to pay the importer or exporter, the capital requirements, do I have a lot of money to do all the marketing and advertising myself, or I don't have much money, so I just sell my goods. We talked about control, and also slightly about coverage. We may want to sell our product in some country where we don't make a product profit because we have a long-term strategy. Okay? In that case, no merchant is going to, to do that for us. We need to do that ourselves, directly or with an agent. What about uh, the character of the middleman? Can we trust them? What's a, what's a good way to know about the character of a middleman? You're hiring an agent to represent your company. How can you find out about their character? Do you understand character? How would you find out if you're hiring an agent to help your company to sell the product in Spain, for example? How would you choose the agent? How would you know about their character? Reputation. Hmm? Reputation. Reputation, right? You have to look at what businesses have they dealt with in the past, how have they done? You have to ask all of those questions, okay? Did, did they try to cheat anybody before? Right? How long have they been doing business? And continuity. So, for example, we don't want to depend too much on one agent, one individual. If the company depends, just one agent knows everything and is doing everything, then that agent dies or retires, something happens, they quit, then we're in trouble. Okay? So we also have to think about don't depend too much on just one person. So when we're loco locating the middlemen, in the US the Department of Commerce can help. In Korea you also have the Government Export Agency. Is it COTRA? Right? They can help you to find the middleman. They have like a list or other companies, other exporting companies already have the experience. They can advise us. So, uh, like you mentioned, we need to screen the middlemen, look at their history. We have to negotiate an agreement. Uh, we have to motivate the middlemen because they have, may have a lot of different products they're working with. So, they, we want them to pay special attention and make sure to sell our product. How can we motivate the middlemen? What do you think? To work for, well for our company and sell our product. You could be dealing with any of these middlemen like Walmart or an importer or an agent. How are you going to motivate Walmart, the importer or the agent to sell your product? Right? For example in Walmart are they going to put your product on the very top shelf at the back of the store? Nobody sees it, right? Are they going to put it in a good place? The agent, are they going to spend a lot of time on your products, advertising? So how can we motivate them? Do you have any idea? Discuss with your partner. How would you motivate the middle person to work hard to sell your products? Give some preference to your product. Thank you.